Welcome back boys and girls and I have another great rifle review for you but before that I have a little lengthy introduction because this rifle belongs to my new hunting buddy Daniel. Now Daniel found me through YouTube and he watched all my hunting videos including one on one and he practically memorized everything. So as a new hunter he reached out to me and was not you know why he only lives 30 minutes from me and we became hunting buddy and partner where he wanted to pay half of the lease for our hunting ground and we also partnered up to buy the dreamland that we just bought last year October and this being his first deer season he shot five deer and at first his family wasn't too sure about the venison they are over the hill with venison they just can't get enough of it so I'm very proud to have hunting buddy like Daniel and it was my honor to introduce him to his first deer season and even though this is only his first season he has learned a lot in the woods and I could probably say he's an experienced hunter now so first year he shot it was 708 and I told him 708 should be more than enough for deer hunting but watching my video he wanted something more to make the high shoulder shot and drop them on the spot and something that has a little bit less recoil so he got himself Ruger American go wire camo with a muzzle brake. Now watching my video, he was really interested about the muzzle brake because this reduces the recoil, but at the same time, this pushes the sound where the deer doesn't know where the sound came from. And many times I experienced where the deer actually gets shot and runs torment because they're a little confused where the sound came from. And Daniel told me it was really cool to see the deer after getting hit running toward it and passing him and dropping where he could see where it dropped. And when we hunt in Virginia, we got a lot of brushes and we have different property lines and we really want to see them drop on the spot. So he's going with 168 grain to make sure it does its job. Now, if you ask what is the best entry hunting rifle or rifle in general, you're going to hear three names. Ruger American, Savage Axis, and Thompson Center Compass. And I am lucky enough to have all three guns in my hand today. But I've done three series of Savage Axis in 308, so you can watch that. So it's time to move on to Ruger American. And yes, I'm going to be comparing this with my Thompson Center Compass on next video. Okay, I could tell you right now, this is a good looking rifle. And if you buy a basic black Ruger American, MSR piece is like $579 and you could get it for about $450. But in this Go Wild Camo and Serial Coated, MSR piece $769, but he only paid $546 for it. And you could usually get it for about $600. Now this rifle only weighs 6.6 .6 pounds, so I think that's really great for hunting. And overall length on this is 42 inches and the barrel length is 22 inches and has a muzzle brake on it all around the barrel. So if you were to shoot this off the ground, you could have some dirt flying into your face. And he told me with this muzzle brake, it did reduce the recoil, but it was way too loud for him. After the last hunt, he still has the ringing in his ear and the doctor told him that he might have the ringing for another three months or so, but he didn't lose any hearings. And actually that could be my fault because he asked me, do I wear ear protection when I'm hunting with the muzzle brake? And I told him no, because I don't have the ringing issue, but everybody's different. So the doctor advised that he should wear the ear protection at any kind of shooting at all. So as for the muzzle brake, it's got pros and cons. And I don't know if you could tell now, but this barrel is not a regular thin barrel. It's slightly thicker and it feels like a semi heavy barrel. So that should help with the accuracy. And this is free floating barrel. Now he did tell me that a lot of Ruger American has an issue with free floating. So he had to send down the left side of the star to make sure it was free floating and it wasn't touching. It comes with a Picatinny rail and this has 70 degree bolt throw. So it gives a plenty of clearance with the scope right here. And the action is quite smooth. Now you could feel a little bit of locking and unlocking of the bolt right here, but not bad as Savage. And it is empty. Now he did add the accessory Picatinny rail in the bottom and on top of the scope because sometimes he goes pig hunting at night. And the record pad, honestly, Little disappointed, it's pretty hard, it could be softer. And the length of the pole is 13.75 inches. I feel like it's a little bit short for me, so adding a recoil pad would help with the recoil and also with the length. This comes with 3 round magazine, but you could buy 5 round magazine and 10 round magazine. I'm a little disappointed they're selling it with 3 round magazine. I think they should sell it with at least 5 round magazine. Now they're all single stack 3 round magazine. <coughs> Okay, honestly, I'm not too happy about the magazine release because that gets in the way putting it in and it does take some pushing to get it in there. Let's see the release. Okay. 
Okay, I was hoping it would pop out. It doesn't. You actually have to push it with one hand and pull it out with another hand. Now this 5 round magazine is PMAC. That pop a little better. 10 round magazine by Ruger. Again, not bad, but none of them popped out. Now, if I had the choice, I would be carrying 5 round magazine or even 10 round magazine for two reasons. Reason number one, after the hunt, when you're dragging the deer out, you can't have your rifle on your shoulder. So you usually have to carry by hand and this makes it so much easier to carry. Reason number two, as you know, up in the tree stand, armrests are usually set very low. So having the little bit of extra height really helps, but 10 rounds would even make it a little bit better. This comes with two-stage tank safety. There right there's a bolt release. Now push that button, it will come right out. Now bring it back, you don't have to push the button. I like the bolt release. That little stainless right there, there's an indication. That means it's loaded and ready to go. Now the trigger is very similar to Aki trigger where it's got a blade in the center for the safety. Now he told me he did replace the trigger spring because this comes with adjustable trigger from 3 to 5 pounds but the lowest he could get down to was 4 pounds and he didn't like it so he replaced the trigger spring. He told me it's between 2 and a half to 3 pounds. Let's check the trigger. Wow, very clean. It feels like about maybe 2 pounds. Let's try again. Yeah, I'll say about two pounds. It's one pound and 12.5 ounces. One more time. Two pounds and zero three ounces. So I want to say this is two pound trigger and it breaks really clean. I like it a lot. For the scope, he bought a True Glow E minus 16, power from 4 to 16, and it does have a parallax adjustment and it does illuminate. Now, honestly, I'm not a big fan of True Glow, but I think he bought this for the night hunt. Okay, I'm really excited about this gun. So let's hit the range and see what we get. Beautiful day like today. I can't believe there's nobody out here today except for me. Well, I'm gonna enjoy it. Now Daniel had decided in a 75 yard with a score power of 5, just like me. But today I'm not gonna make any adjustment to the score. I'm just gonna go for a 3 shot group at 100 yards. And first we're gonna start with a feather power shot, 180 grain. But let's hit the gun first. <laughs> Woo! Okay, first shot at left low target. It's right at 12, maybe an inch high, which I expected. And honestly, the recoil is soft, even with 180 grain. Okay, the single feeling with soft nose was not easy. It keeps nose diving and getting stuck. Wow, bullseye. Third shot. It's hitting above at 12. Okay, this time I'm gonna be shooting match grade, federal premium, 168 grain, and low middle target. Okay, single feeding was easier with 5 round magazine. I don't know why. But this is not a Ruger magazine, this is PMAC. 11 o'clock. The trigger is really nice as expected. Second shot. 
Wow, it's touching each other. Okay, now I'm getting nervous. The third shot. Oh wow, even through the same hole, I like this match grade. Okay, next time I'll be doing 3 shot group with a match grade, 155 gram by PPU, right lower target. Second shot. Third shot. Okay, got a nice pattern, but I probably have maybe inch and a quarter or half. 100 yards. That's 180 grain, soft nose, feather match grade. That is crazy tight. And that's 155 match grade. All right, let's take a look. First, feather power shot, 180 grain, 1.9 inches. Not too good. The second, I was really happy. Feather premium match grade, 0.53 inches. PPU match grade, 155 grain. The pattern is pretty good, but it's 1.33 inches. Okay, let's try different high animation. Corner of the white tail, 150 grain. Left lower target, three shots. Wow, second shot. Oh yeah, he's touching each other. I'm getting a little nervous, third shot. Woo. That is tight. Okay, this time feather fusion, 165 grain, right lower target. Second shot. Yeah, that's pretty tight. Okay, third shot. Oh yeah, this gun shoots any ammunition great. Except 180 grain, and the scope is surprisingly clear, and it's holding up just fine. I have to rethink about true glow. I'm telling you man, this Ruger American could shoot anything. That's with whitetail, and that's with the feather fusion. With a regular 100 whitetail, 150 grain, 0 0.5 inches. And with the feather fusion, 165 grain, which was shooting horribly, with Savage, is shooting 0 0.83 inches. I'm very surprised. So, what do I think about the Ruger American Go Wild? I could tell you man, I could go wild with this rifle. And as you've seen it, this is shooting a very exceptional group with most of the ammunition. And I think it's due to that semi-heavy barrel, so I like that a lot. I love the serial coating. I love the trigger, but I think you have to replace the trigger spring. And it looks beautiful. Now one thing that I didn't like was the magazine. It wasn't easy to do a single fitting, and because I do a lot of shooting at the range, that is important to me. But with 5 round magazine, I was having a lot less problem. So I will go with 5 round PMAP. It is empty. As for the bolt action. Now unlike the bolt, it's a little stiff, but not better at Savage Axis. I have three 308 rifles and they're all semi-automatic. And if I was to buy a bolt action, I would seriously consider Ruger American Go Wild. Because you know, accuracy is 90% for me. But this rifle is accurate, beautiful, nice trigger, light. One more can I say. Now, since I have Thompson Center Compass, Savage Axis, and American Ruger in my hand, I'm actually thinking about comparing three best entry rifles, and that's coming soon. They say, don't judge the book by the cover, and honestly, I did judge this goal, and after shooting it, I was very, very impressed. Again, thank you, Daniel, and lastly, like always, thank God for what you have, enjoy life with what you got, but sometimes if you have good friends, you could enjoy something that you don't have. See ya.